I've been pretty lucky and, uh, you know, and, and, and was able to, you know, um, play with some bands I, I grew up with that I was a big fan of and idolized. And, uh, you know, I was able to experience some great things that, you know, I never expected I would, of course, nobody really does on that level. And, um, you know, very thankful and very happy. I was able to experience a lot of these things and still be able to play music and, and, you know, record and release music to, uh, you know, cause I, I did establish a, a name for myself uh, globally. And, uh, of course that helps. And, um, we're still doing what we we've always done, you know, is, is play music, record music. And so, but very cool that I was able to experience all that. And, and, and but I never had to, uh, no. <laughs> Listen to the Vibes. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. Man, I am very privileged, very honored to have Mr. Glenn Drover here with me. Now, he's uh, got a band together with his brother, uh, Sean. It's called Withering Scorn. They got an album coming out July 7th called Prophets of Demise. And before we get into that conversation, Glenn, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Well, I don't know how far back you want to go, but... Uh... Born in, in Ontario, moved to Quebec, then moved back to Ontario and been here ever since. Uh, music wise, I mean, you know, some people probably remember me from, you know, the Megadeth days. I played with King Diamond, did some work with Testament. Of course, me and my brother had a band called Eidolon for many years. We did four or five albums for Metal Blade with that stuff. It was primarily a recording band with a handful of shows that we did, you know, mainly festivals. And um, yeah, and here we are with... Uh, it was it's been quite a while since me and Sean have actually had a project together uh since the mega that day so this is the first time we're doing something together in, in quite a few years and uh yeah here we are really excited about this new uh band and album we just decided we just wanted to you know around I guess 2019 2020 we decided we wanted to to uh to put a band together you know and just and and, and start recording again and um we started working on some material and uh started talking to uh well i've been friends with uh, with joe tobias from fate's warning and asked him if he'd be interested and he got on board and as well as uh as henning bossy who's been a, a friend of mine for many years he's a singer from germany for those who don't know him and he played in a couple of bands uh, firewind and battalion great bands and always loved his voice, and uh, so it was really cool to come together and and uh, and play with these musicians. I've always been a huge Fates Warning fan, you know, as well. So uh, it was exciting to start this process. Are, are you the primary songwriter, or is it just no. a group collaboration, or how's that go? The way me and Sean have done it for many years, um, on and off, is is uh, he he actually writes a lot of the riffs. He's a drummer, but he writes a lot of great music. And uh, and we'll and I write some, but he writes a good chunk of the music. Um, my role is more, you know, um, the you know the material that I write and the collaboration I do with him to maybe refine some. He might come up with something, and I might it might spark an idea for me to come up with another part of that song or whatever. So we've always done it that way, and also to uh, be in the audio engineer. So you know, I, basically a lot of the recording is done here, mixing and and so forth. Um, Aside from, you know, of course, the other guys doing their tracks and their their home studios and so forth. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much how it's been, you know. Is there a theme to the album? No. Aside mm. from just being just a 100% heavy metal record. You know, we just wrote, as we always have, you know, just writing stuff we we like. We please ourselves first. If it's something we don't like, we don't use it. Um and that's the only way, real true way to do it. It's got to be wholehearted, you know, can't worry about, oh, you know, these people might not like, you, know, you can't, you have to do it for yourself first. And, uh, and we've never had any problems with that because we love music. This is what we do. This is what we've always done. And, mm -hmm. 
no difference here with this one at all. But yeah, that's pretty much about it. So, you know, the uh, lyrics might be a little bit more dark here and there, but um, I think that's a reflection of the music. It's a pretty heavy record, pretty dark, you know, yeah. but there's a lot of good melodies and stuff in there. And uh, I'm very, very proud of it. Yeah, I've I've only got to hear Prophets of Demise and I I did see the video on YouTube, the lyric video, but I understand you released another video today. Well, there's actually three. The the one you seen, the title track, Prophets of Demise, that was the first lyric video. It's like kind of like a lyrics lyric video slash graphics, you know, it's just a lot of crazy graphics mixed in with, you know, the you know, the lyrics, you know, that are on the screen that you can uh, sing along to and uh sing along with. And um, there was a second video that was released about, I don't know, a month ago, maybe um, called one of my favorite songs in the album called Dark Reflection. So that was another lyric slash graphic video that was released. So two are out there. And then today, uh, the third single, whatever you want to call it, video was released, just released this morning, uh, which is called uh, Dethroned. And it's uh, this one's a band video. So unlike the first two that were, you know, nowadays, it's a, it seems to be common for bands to do these lyric graphic videos. So, but this is the first uh, of the, you know, the only one of the three where it's a band video. So I think people might really, really dig this one. Although I do like the other ones a lot. I think they, uh, you know, they came together really well. And, um, and, but this one, you know, I mean, the way it was recorded is, is a little bit different for us because we all have our own kind of, you know, photo video set up in our in our in our houses or whatever and um this one being that we know we all had these black screens that we just did footage in front of so we all did the fo the footage the video footage for this for this uh for this song individually and then you know sent all the the uh, the raw footage of all of our segments to the um the video guy at frontiers who did all the assembling and editing of the video so considering how it was it was recorded because never did you know that kind of it was never that kind of procedure before that we followed to shoot a video it was always the old school video you're all in the same place but to, anyways it came out really really well i'm really happy with the way it turned out so but that's how we shot it a lot of people are doing that these days and it came out really really good really uh, happy with the way it turned out y'all are, are able to work in the studio together now yeah yeah I mean, we do, there's, there's, you know, a same with, with the recording, you know, some of the stuff we're recording together, some of the stuff, you know, Henning did his vocals in Germany, Joe did his, his bass parts in Connecticut and so forth. But, you know, me and Sean, have done a lot of stuff together. Um, this is pretty much home base here where, uh, um, you know, I keep the main sessions, everything comes, you know, is, is flown into the sessions here, um, no matter where the stuff is recorded. And uh, and then, of course, followed, you know, by mixing and, and uh, mastering and all that stuff. Yeah, I know a lot of bands have been doing that where people yeah. are all over the place and doing it. But is it like a, a different energy when you're in the same room together? Well, it can be. It's a different dynamic. There's no question about that. But, you know, the beauty of, of the of technology of, of being able to do that and collaborate where you're sending files back and forth instantly you know, we have this kind of stuff where we can, you know, we can communicate by video via video on, on Skype or this or whatever uh, about what we're doing. I've done stuff live where Sean would be on video and I'd be recording stuff and he'd say yes or no, or, you know, and, and so it's not like, you know, there's still proper communication. It's just, you know, you can't reach out and touch the person, which of course you wouldn't. So it's, you know, it, it's, it still works. Uh, a lot of people are doing it that way. It's just, that's just the way, you know, uh, a lot of situations are these days just by doing it uh, long distance, these long distance kind of collaborations, you know, but, but to a point, like I say, me and, you know, me and Sean are pretty close. We work, work very close together. So, um, you know, a bit of both worlds. How about that? <laughs> yeah. I say, I, I still hear some great music, even though like I say the guys are sometimes spread out, but I don't know. Uh, I've, I've talked to other musicians who there just seems like there's that special feel when they're playing live in the out. I mean, in the studio together, opposed well, to what they're doing, you know? Yeah. Well, I guess it all depends on who's behind the whole thing. I think we do rather well doing it this way as well as of course we've done all, we've done all that. Um, 
but uh, it's it works really well. We'd never really compromise if we felt like you know there there was a disconnect and it wasn't you know there wasn't that you know that inspiration and and just you know chemistry that was that that happens to make everything sound cohesive you know which i feel the album does i feel yeah. it's very cohesive and we all work really well together i think it all depends on the group of musicians the group of members in the band <clears throat> that uh, dictate whether it's going to have a good flow or not you know and of course that's all you know yeah. subjective isn't it well, in technology, I mean, God, we can do so many things now that wasn't capable back, you know, in the eighties and whatnot. But yeah, with but with no, I mean, string, right? We, you oh. know, we you have to you do what you you know, you do the best you can. You got to remember, we're 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 spread out over three countries, mm. you know. So it's just, but again, because of technology, it allows us to do this, whereas normally you would not be able to. You couldn't do it you know, right. without having to spend tons of money to get everybody together and so forth. Um, but being, you know, that we can do this. Um, I, I love the concept of doing this. I, I did it before, you know, all the pro tools and stuff. People were doing it uh, recording in the box, as they call it for, you know, computer recording, you know, when we had tape machines, you know, and with the ADAP machines, we were sending tapes back and forth. You know, I just always loved that concept. It's just a lot easier now. Yeah. Well, with streaming services and and all that going on, does it make it harder for the band to be successful? I mean, you have to get more into touring and merchandise and stuff, or how yeah, is that for the bands? Again, it's just you know making you know putting the awareness out there and 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 developing a fan base. Yeah, it is a little bit. It's again, it's a different world, and you know, there's albums that are coming out every five minutes, so you have to. You know, you just have to stay on it, you know, and and, and uh, continue to put the word out, you know, between it's not just the record label. You don't let them do all the work. You got to it's it's an effort between the band and and, and the record company to uh, to promote, you know, and I like doing any anyways. It was it's never bothered me. I've always done it regardless. And, and uh, for many years and no different now. But I think it's it's even more crucial because of the volume that product volume of product that is released and and. Me included, it's it gets to be kind of you know daunting. There's, there's so much stuff out there, you know. You get that what I call option anxiety, you know. It's and and being, you know, finding something and being um, content with just exploring that without bouncing around. And you know, we all do this. We're all a victim of this. This is the not so great part of technology. It takes a little bit of time, I think, to develop uh, now because, like I say, because of of the amount of product that is released, it's just. It's just different that way, but that's okay. There's good and bad in, in all of it. How about that? <laughs> yeah, for sure. But a lot of good, more good than anything else. It's all it's all good stuff. Yeah. Well, you you think about that kid that's in his bedroom, can get on a computer and pretty much do everything from the computer and can get his stuff out there, whether it's YouTube or you can even upload on Spotify and all these other channels. Mm -hmm. Um, it in a sense, it makes it easier for someone to get their stuff out there compared to what y'all had to do when you first got into the music business, is there maybe a little bit of resentment for that fact uh, that you had to work harder or? No, because again, it's a completely different world, you know, repeating myself here um, because, you know, years and years ago you had to be, you know, if you weren't signed to a label, nobody was going to know who you were. You know, right. and you had to tour, you know, relentlessly and, you, and, and, and not just that's all, all that stuff is still, of course, very effective and, and, and it's still done, obviously. Um, but uh, as far as touring and stuff, but now we have more open doors where we have, you know, um, the internet for the exposure. No, no, there's no resentment uh, because um, I, I, you know, I'm experiencing a lot of cool things that that I'm enjoying now, as well as, you know, when when uh years ago when it was uh, a different way of uh exposing exposing your band you know it's again it, it, some of it's really is great the open doors that we have some sometimes it makes it a little bit difficult depending on what you know the angle but uh, i mean overall i i think it's 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 uh you know we focus on all the positives you know of what we have in front of us and and that can help our band and all that stuff and and it is it is pretty cool that we can have that immediate exposure, um, and there you have it. I mean, it's great for someone like me 
that I'm able to upload to all these different platforms and do my show and talk to so many great people where I would have never got this opportunity back when I was in high school. Sure. Yeah. It <laughs> does open these doors for for just about anybody to get out there. And that's of course the great side of, of things. The, the great part is that you can do that. It doesn't have to be a situation where if you're not signed to a decent sized label that no one was ever going to know who you were. And uh, you know, because um yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just you know, it, it's nice to be able to express yourself musically and be able to just get the stuff out there and have people listen to it. That's a great thing. Yeah, it it just it's, it makes it a little harder, I think, again, for because there is so much content, you know, it's like, whoa, but it's all good. How did you get your breakthrough into music? Well, probably when I joined King Diamond, that was, you know, we're all kind of you know, playing with a professional band and a band that I grew up idolizing, you know, it was an amazing experience and uh, I'll always be grateful to King for that, you know, and let, and uh, allowing me to, to join the band do the touring I did with them. And, but yeah, that's, you know, before that, my, you know, Sean, Sean and I had, you know, in the early nineties started recording stuff, you know, at home, you know, back then in the early nineties, we didn't of course have all this. We had, you know, four track machines and then eight tracks and then 16. And, you know, I, I built basically from the early nineties, my home studio started with a very small four track cassette, you know, and then I went to a reel to reel eight track and then, you, you know, on, 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 I'm still doing that to this day. I'm still building, uh, which is of course something that's always been exciting for me. We've, you know, made some pretty cool progress along the way with that recorded a lot of albums, but King is where, you know, where it started as far as, you know, getting more of a, you know, developing a name internationally. And then, of course, it continued from there with Megadeth and so forth. Well, we we kind of expose our age when we talk about eight tracks. I think my first one was the Doobie Brothers Greatest Hits. Oh, cool. That's a great <laughs> album. Uh, eight track, of course, I mean, you know, reel to reel, you know, you're right, recording yeah. eight track. But yeah, eight track. I still collect all that stuff. I'm, you know, probably one of the few wacky people that do that. I just love to collect music, period. So. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I think I went from Doobie Brothers' greatest hits, and then in '78 when uh, Van Halen's first album came out, I got that. Right. Leonard Skinner's greatest hits. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's I remember Sean buying that the first two Van Halen's uh, uh, albums, Van Halen albums on eight track. He, uh, we were kids, and he went away for some soccer trip or something like that. And he, and while he was away, those were a couple of albums that, that he bought and. That was all new to me, you know. I still have one of those. Yeah. We're probably around the same age, so the same kind of uh, experiences along the way. Yeah. Uh, and, we, you know, we had all those records, and then I thought cassette tapes was going to be the end-all, be-all. Mm. And then right about high school is when CDs came out. I thought, well, how are you going to get any better than CDs? That's still my favorite uh, uh, medium favorite format uh for music is cds still uh but i love vinyl you know as long as it's pressed properly and you know all that and um but yeah i'll, I'll never forget you know the first time i i got my first cd player and, and i bought uh defenders of the faith on cd and i was the oh, first and i put that on i was amazed at clarity and that in between the songs it was you know you were used to hearing all the crackle and crap from an album or this you know from a cassette a noise floor from the audio the analog with cd it was just like digital black you know you don't hear anything i was remember just being so excited about that you know and just and hearing things you know that i had i might have had that on certain cds on album prior and i'm you hear things that you didn't hear before you know and ear candy and so forth and yeah it's still my favorite format yeah i think my first one was led zeppelin too okay you know, on, on I, cd yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had to hear a whole lot of love come through the speakers and see how clear that was going to be. And right, 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 right. You know, Dark Side of the Moon and all, yeah, all those that great was... albums. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then, and then they came up with those share drives, and now you just stream everything if I you mean... want to. I, I like to have the hard copy personally. I, you know, it, it's good for what it is. Sometimes if I'm up, if I'm up outside, and you know, hey Alexa, you know, play whatever. It's all good for that. But uh, I still like to have the hard copies of albums, whether it's a CD or, or vinyl or a track. Are y'all going to put this out on vinyl? 
Uh, it should be. Uh, we started with the CD release, so we're going to see what happens. It should be out on vinyl at some point. Yeah, I'm hoping. Yep. Yeah. The, really don't the, know what the plan is and, and when, but hopefully soon. The so. cost of vinyl now is so much different than what it used to be. I, I heard it. Oh, it's to, a flip flop of what it was. I mean, you know, when yeah. CDs came out, they were $25, $30. I'm, I'm talking Canadian now. Uh, you know, and, and albums were, you know, 10, 12 bucks. Now it's reversed pretty much, you know. Um, mm -hmm. but you know, it's, it's, uh, whatever. I love, <laughs> I love all, all the formats. I love them all. There's something about though, picking up that record and yeah. the, the artwork, sure. you, know, you know, how many of those albums you'd get excited if you open it up and maybe there was a lyric sheet in it or. Right. Right. And that's, what? you know, it, it, yeah, it's just, you know, but even CDs too, with the new album, you know, it, really happy with the layout you know it looks killer um and that of course will be you know the same thing with, once you know we get a, a vinyl release you know where it's 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 a great layout very happy with the artwork and all the uh, all the packaging you know it's it's uh i think people are going to really dig it like i said man the, that artwork that came with records or like when i used to buy the kiss albums and you'd get a poster or something in it or all yep. those other cool little things what they had uh that little paper uh gun that came in love gun yeah, yeah. remember that? That, was my very, that was my very first album the very first album i ever owned my parents bought me that when i was eight years old 1977 very very first album before that i was you know listening to my older brother and sister's records you know which was not it was lighter rock you know like elton john and the eagles and uh elo and super tramp which some of that stuff i still really like a lot and um but first hard rock band and first album that was my own was love gun first when it first came out well you were lucky my my mom wouldn't let me listen to kiss oh okay <laughs> <laughs> i used to sneak around the little store behind us and mm. when they had the bubble gum cards yeah and yeah. they were they were like 25 cents a piece or something right and i i would go until i finally got the whole set so you could oh, make yeah, the little right, right. poster on the back and all that yeah, and, right that was that's right with the original set that yep yeah, yep yeah. I used to have that set. I think I had two of them. Where are they oh are now? I'm not sure. But anyway, there you have it. So. What? Well, I thought I'd hit them real good, and she found them, and she tossed them all. Mm -hmm. And I, oh man, it made me sick to my stomach. And I did find them again several years later. I bought them off a guy, and I think the whole set was sixty bucks. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. So yeah, you, you had cool parents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And we were stuck listening to John Denver. <laughs> yes, which is, of course, uh, you know. Yeah, don't get me going. What do you like to do outside of music? I'm just a family guy, you know, really quiet. I live in a small, quiet town. Um, you know, um, play golf sometimes, you know. Um, that's about it, really, you know. I like to spend time with my family and play guitar and uh, play a little bit of golf here and there and hang out with friends sometimes and... I'm pretty simple, you know? Yeah, so. I guess a lot of people expect all the rock stars to be these crazy no. party people all the time. No, no, it's I'm not, not that I'm, way. I'm not that kind of guy, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm a coffee drinker now. I don't, uh, I don't drink. I, uh, you know, just like to have a nice, easy, uh, normal life and, uh, and, and just, you know, a lot of quality time with my family. That's, that's what I do. Has there been any, like major hurdles in your life that you've had to overcome no i've been pretty lucky and uh you know and and, and was able to you know um play with some bands I, I grew up with that i was a big fan of and idolized and uh you know i was able to experience some great things that you know i never expected i would of course nobody really does on that level very thankful and very happy I was able to experience a lot of these things and still be able to play music and, and, you know, record and release music to, uh, you know, cause I, I did establish a, a name for myself uh, globally. And uh, of course that helps. And um, we're still doing what, we're, what we've always done, you know, is, is play music, record music. And so, but very cool that I was able to experience all that. And, and, and but uh, never had to, uh, no, no, it's mm -hmm. all been good. Let's see. Um, I know you got things to do, but is there any advice that you'd give to that kid out there that's wanting to get into the music business? 
not anything different than anybody else would tell them, which is, you know, obviously it's, you, you, you know, be true to, to yourself about what, what it is that you're doing. Don't follow other people, you know, make your own footsteps because uh, we need a lot more of that stuff these days. There's, there's so much what I call the sheeple effect where, you know, there's just too many people following everybody else. And, you know, everybody yeah. wants to play arpeggios if you're a guitar player and it just gets old and boring, you know, it, it's, it's, it would be nice to hear some, maybe some, some bands creating more, um, you know, just, you know, just opening new ground for, you know, for just different possibilities. That's what I think, you know, you should definitely just, ex you know, express yourself. Don't try to sound like anybody else and pursue what you really believe in. You know, it's got to come from here. You know, it's musical expression. It's uh that's what it's all about. It's not, it's not a sport. It's not about you're a guitar player. Who's the fastest and, all that kind of thing. It, it's not a sport. It's um, it's it's something that you express. It comes from within. That's where the motivation, the inspiration, and all that stuff comes from. It's from all of that. You know, it's not a big challenge here. And do you guys have a website? Absolutely. Yeah. Of course. There's uh, um, well, the website we have. I think the main ones to go to right now would be you know the uh, the Facebook page. We have an Instagram page. Um, and uh those are the ones to start off with initially and of course you can find all our you know the album stuff and, and everything at the uh, you know at uh, frontiers.com as well all right well i will post all those links and you also have a pre-order for the album I, i'm gonna put that up as well yeah i but mean the, the pre-order you know I, most people like myself probably do amazon but of course you know there's the record label uh, store you can order it probably a lot of other outlets but the main ones i think that people use and and might be more interested in i don't know would be the amazons which of course is amazon.ca for canada and .com for the us yeah, cool. and whatever else for overseas gotcha well man i thank you a lot for your time and yeah, no uh, problem i appreciate you being on the show and I yep. also want to thank all you folks out there. If you are new to the channel, well, I hope you'll come back. Hit that subscribe button for my regulars. You guys are awesome because you make it possible for me to do this. Uh, please like, share, subscribe. And until the next one, everyone, please take care. Be kind to one another. God bless and peace. Come time into the